said, is everybody ready? Yeah. I want them everybody ready. Yeah. Oh, we're going to shout. Yeah. Everybody going to shout. Yeah. We're going to rock the ad lib tonight. Yeah. OK, baby. Yeah. You know you make me want to throw my hand back and throw my hand up and throw my hand back. I was born in Digo Martin. That's about the third town in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, I was born in 1943, and I came to England 69 years ago. The reason why I came here is because the government, after the Second World War ended, and so Winston Churchill lost the election, the government from here, from England, councillors, they all came down to where I lived, in Trinidad and Tobago, and they came to my school and they begged us to tell our parents they must come to England to make England a greater country. That's why we came. And when we got here, the people didn't want us here. It was a government fault. They should have told the people that we were coming. We were invited. We didn't come here to take their job. We were invited to come here by the English government. When I was five years of age, I got a guitar, a toy guitar for my Christmas and uh, I saw a photo of Frank Sinatra in the, in the magazine and I said, look dad, I can sing like Frank Sinatra. And my dad said, you can't sing like, you can't sing like Frank Sinatra. So he gave me some hope. <laughs> what was it like growing up in England? And the area that you moved to? Well, different places, different strokes with different folks. Uh, Ours done was very good, no racial problems. All they said was, my teeth looks white because my skin is black, so that was comical. Wilsdon was okay, that was no problems. But when we moved to South London, that's where we faced a lot of racial problems. And uh, the Wranglers, I couldn't get on with the, with the person who sponsored us because she liked Cliff Richard. And because I was getting more and more popular with the band, she hated it. And uh, they used to drop me early in the morning from a gig about one o'clock in the morning. They used to drop me in at Catford and I had to walk two miles with my gear. And uh, I, I nearly got shot twice walking on the pavement. A car slowed down, bang, hit the fence, missed me. Halfway home, another car slowed down, bang! This is early in the morning, it uh, missed me. So I thought, God's got a plan for me. My career started when I went to Sedgehill School in South London. I enjoyed the music lessons. The teacher who taught music loved me a lot. He said I had a great personality and he said I could stick to it and I could make a living. I formed, a, I formed a band with a friend of mine I met at Sedgley School. His name was Peter London. The first time we heard Cliff Richard move it, I said, oh, I've got to form a band here. And I formed it with him. We were called the Thunder Beats. But we were awful. We weren't any good at all. But people used to book us. And they sacked me because I used to sing flat. And then I heard the Wranglers had an audition for a vocalist. I went. I was the last one. I remember I sang Ray Charles, What I Say, and they'd never heard anything like that before, and they knocked them out, and I joined them. The uh, audition was done at the top of the Lucian Hospital. They went to the room there, and when they heard What I Say, boy, that was news to them. They'd never heard anything like that before because all they played was Cliff Richard and the Shadows. And of course, my music was a lot more exciting. But they were very good musicians, the Wranglers, very good. And they picked it up quickly, especially the drummer. He was terrific. But he was leaving the band, but he said, I will tell them to take you on. You're the best one we've had all day because they were auditioning all day and I was the last one. And uh, they gave me the job.
At first it was great. I enjoyed it. <clears throat> I wasn't singing good. I was still tending to go flat. But the songs I went flat on was the ones that Cliff Richard used to do. And it wasn't my style. And I got really good when I, uh, yeah, I heard Elvis Presley. I studied him. And his tone is something like mine, his key range and so on. Especially when I heard him, where, uh, what was that one song? Well, since my baby left me. Well, since my baby left me, well, I found a new place to dwell. Well, it's down at the end. Got no place. That one, that influenced me a lot. I mean, what was it like being in a movie? Well, it was comical, really. Uh, the chap made the money to uh, make Be My Guest. <laughs> It broke up because uh, we, Colin McCall left, the bass player, and the leader of the band was the son of the sponsorship. He wanted to play bass, but he was a rhythm guitarist, but we didn't think he'd be good enough. But anyway, Alan and myself asked him to come over to Alan's house and start practicing. You could play bass, but he saw his chance to break the band up, you see, because all the instruments and that belonged to his mum. So one night, he went to the ad lib club, took all his instruments out, and we had nothing to play with the following night. We managed by hiring some stuff, but he saw his chance to break the band up, because he wasn't happy with my music. Moving from, we lived in Forest Gate near Leighton Stone, we came down here, and uh, we moved to our Abbey Farm. It was lovely coming from Forest Gate with the trees and the rivers and all that. It was a lovely place. All the houses were brand new. It was great. We had a good time. But then I still wanted to sing. So I, uh, I took a job in the factory here, Dust Control, I think it was called. And the, you, you had to weld. And uh, <laughs> they kept me for 10 years and I couldn't weld. <laughs> I just bluffed my way through. That's how bad it, that's how bad that factory was. My very first gig was for the Jews, and that was my first gig. But I was lucky, the person who backed me was Kenny Clayton, and I got on well with him, he was a good friend. And he backed me that night for that Jewish thing. And I'm glad he was there, because when I walked on stage, some of the Jews got up and said, what's that? doing here we don't want that there and they came up to my mic stand and spat on the floor and they turned their back on me and the bloke who booked me he couldn't believe what they were doing to me my manager there he said go off so I went off so when I went to the change room and started the change my manager said to Kenny how do you think Kenny did he was blaming me <laughs> so Kenny said to him it's not Kenny it's them and that was my first gig when after the band broke up, my very first gig, I wasn't looking for a big hit. I wanted to get a band and go back on stage because things changed in the record industry around about that time. It was difficult, difficult to have a band. You needed money. And to make money, you had to have a hit record. But I wasn't aiming for that because I wasn't in show business for the money. I wasn't because I enjoyed it. I enjoyed going on stage and the applause and all that. Mr. David Bowie, he became my best friend. I met him at Charing Cross Road Station on a Friday. He was going, yeah, he was standing next to me. I didn't know who he was. He, was, he wasn't known as David Bowie then. He was known as David Jones. And he was standing next to me. And I noticed the way he was dressed is like, what the girls wear today with the high boots and so on and people like myself we were still in flares and winkle pickers the pointed toe shoes and he had a he had his trousers tucked in his boots and he had a suede jacket on with frills and he combed his hair like Elvis Presley 
when the Beatles were popular, everyone was having the Beatle hairstyle, but he had an Elvis Presley haircut. Anyway, I looked at him, and I just started talking to him because I found it, he, he seems interesting. And that's how I got to know him. And I used to meet him every Friday evening when I went to my agent, and he was coming from his agent, we on the bar between four and five. And if I didn't see him, he shouted out, Ken, Ken, Ken. And we used to talk. We became very good friends. Not in the show busy style, just natural friends. And I got on so well with him, you know. There was no jealousy or cutthroat. He just perfect friend. He just perfect friend. Yes, I'm happy with my career because I never did it for the money. I did it because I enjoyed doing it. And a lot of my friends who work, who did it for the money, they've had to pack up because they were just interested in making money. Whereas with me, it was the other way around. I enjoyed doing it and that was it. Right, we're gonna give him now the midnight hour. <laughs> 